Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up a flight plan and fly it with autopilot using the mouse and keyboard. I've got a mouse connected to my Xbox Series S and this should work on the X as well. Using a mouse and keyboard to alter things like the autopilot in the aircraft and using your mouse to press various buttons and using your keyboard to send commands to the simulator as well. So we'll be following a flight plan and using the mouse and keyboard with the Xbox Series S. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so as you can see, we're on the main menu on the Xbox Series S. I'm moving my mouse around, and this brings this version on par or very similar par to the PC, PC version that I have as well, because now I'm using my mouse, it just all feels very natural to navigate. I'm going to go to Options up here, left-click there, and left-click on Control Options. I Last, I can say left click when using the Xbox version. Feels a lot more natural. As you can see, I've got a keyboard connected because it's come up here. If I open all these menus by clicking that box down there, you can see there's a whole load of things that are bound to the, key the keyboard by default. I'll probably do a video in the future showing how you can set up custom camera views and how you can change between those custom camera views as well. Let me know if you want to see that kind of video for the Xbox version of uh, Flight Simulator. I'll collapse all them. I'm going to change something here. I'm going to go to Brakes, open that menu. I'm going to change that toggle parking brakes. I don't like that default binding, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to mouse over that. It's great to say mouse at last. <laughs> going to mouse over this box, left click, I'm going to clear that default binding by clear current input, I'm going to click on start scanning, left click, and on my keyboard I'm going to press the space bar, that's more natural for me to reach. Press the space bar, it warns that it's bound already to a couple of things. The drone I'm not worried about unless you're in drone view don't worry about it because you're if you're in the cockpit or external it's not going to affect anything if you press the space bar there. Cockpit up, up of view that will affect my view so I'm gonna have to change that setting but first let's validate those changes I've made. Toggle parking, parking brakes to my space bar I'll validate that and I'm going to have to enter a new profile. Click on this box here, left click and I can use my actual keyboard to type in a new profile. I'm just going to type in new. Press enter on the keyboard which is great and then press OK left click and that's now set up to a new profile. Let's go search by input here left click in the box and press your spacebar I'm gonna clear that co cockpit view upper because I, when I press my spacebar I don't want my view to change so left click in the box there clear current input and validate and go down to apply and save and left click and that's all set up that's all I want to do on the keyboard for now I'll go back to the main menu, go to world map, let's set up a flight plan. On my previous video that I, I will link in the top right corner, I did a flight plan over London. Let's change things up, let's do a flight plan over Paris. So I'm going to scroll in using my mouse. By the way, to navigate the world map with your mouse, left click on an open space, hold down your left button, and you can move your mouse left and right up and down to navigate around the map. Scroll in using the mouse wheel. And I'm looking for an airport that's 
close to Paris center. Le Bourgeois should do. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm going to left click on that and zoom to details. I want to take off in this direction so we're heading towards Paris. I'm going to left click on runway 25 and set as departure. I'm going to zoom out and when I fly over Paris I'll show you that in a moment. Before I do that I just want to reset something and I'll show you this in a moment. Let's go to the more button here and open filters. I'll show you more of this in a moment but I just want to get rid of a lot of these markers on the screen. So I'm going to turn that off and this is probably the way that your default map will be showing without those markers. I'll show you how to get those markers back up in a moment. I forgot to turn them off before I started recording. But I'll, show, I'll talk more about them in a moment. I want to fly over to Orly. I will be adding waypoints around Paris. Don't worry about that. But I'm going to set my arrival. So zoom over. Zoom in to Orly. I want to land in this direction. So this runway, runway 20, is ideal. Set as arrival. Left click and then mouse down to set as arrival. Left click. And that's our simple flight plan, but I want to add more to that. Now, people are having problems and troubles with this next part of adding waypoints. I want to add the Eiffel Tower, which I believe is there. I want to add that as a waypoint. So, if get hold of a cheap mouse. Mice are very cheap to buy. I'm using a very cheap wired USB mouse and keyboard. They cost me a few pound each. Very easy to, easy to get hold of. Get hold of one is my recommendation. Move your mouse over to the Eiffel Tower if you're going to follow this case. Left click. A menu should pop up and just mouse down to add there. To add the Eiffel Tower to our flight plan. Now, I'm coming in on this runway. I don't want to come in on this angle. I want to line up, so I'm coming down straight. There's nothing to add here. There's no point of interest to add, so I can get a straight approach to the runway. So, a different way of doing this. This is a menu you're probably seeing. Go down to where it says more down here. I'm using the mouse in this case, left click on that and then left click on open filters here and it will show various filters that you can add to this map page. So you've got like background maps, satellite, clouds, if you zoom out you can see clouds and various other things. Use your mouse wheel to scroll down this menu to the very bottom and where you can see fix and RNAV position report. Mouse over to the arrow to the right here and left click and it will add a lot more markers at fix and RNAV markers to your map. Now we've done that we can close this menu by going to close and I want to add this marker will do if I add that marker to my flight plan so mouse over it left click and go to add just mouse down to add and left click again and that's now added it don't worry about the way the uh, flight simulator on the Xbox has added it slightly different on PC it's more precise uh, there's a few oddities let's call them with the Xbox version but it has added that waypoint to my flight plan so I'm getting a straight approach into the runway hopefully so that's our flight plan set up. If you're having trouble adding waypoints, just try and copy and do exactly what I've done there. I've not altered my Xbox version in any other way. It's pretty much the default version. And I've just added the various waypoints as you saw there. Be persistent with it. It does work. Go to flight conditions. I've set my flight conditions to scattered clouds. There's a reason for that. I'll show you that once we're in flight. 
That's all set up. I've got the Cessna 172 with the G1000 selected. Let's go fly. Okay, so we're set up on our departure airport. You can see I've got the mouse here just to prove I am on the Xbox version. I'll click in my left analog stick and you can see the familiar cursor come up. I'm not going to use that. Obviously, I've got the mouse connected. One thing I can do here, which I showed in my last video, is remove, and I fully advise you do this, that bottom wind layer. Just mouse up to that menu at the top there, go to the cloud icon, which is your weather. Left click on that. And this icon here looks like a kind of tap. Left click on that and delete that layer. I generally do that anyway, I just don't like that layer. As you can see, we've got some quite atmospheric lighting i may change that if things are difficult to spot especially the arrival runway we'll see how it goes what i'm going to do now is grab my con controller using the default binding left bumper stick and down on the d-pad i'm going to click it a couple of times down to get to our left g1000 i'm using my mouse now i'm going to scroll over this alt wheel and instead of using the controller i can just mouse up or down on that alt wheel to set an autopilot altitude it would be this number here that will change to set an altitude for our autopilot to climb to so i'll mouse up you can see i just needed to mouse up to get it to a thousand feet go to the outer knob so that's highlighted mouse up on that to to select 1200 feet so we want our autopilot to climb to 1200 feet when i take off i'm going to come back down to this screen and i'm going to click i'm going to use the keyboard the default key on the keyboard is z to turn the autopilot computer on so i won't be clicking that i'll be pressing z on my keyboard connected that will turn the autopilot computer on. I'll be coming down to this screen to click left click the nav mode. I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to do it when we're up and flying. And that should follow our course. Very simple. So I'm going to click my left button, bumper button on my gamepad. And click my up button on my, um, on, on my D-pad to get back to the cockpit view. Now we're all set up. For a flight okay so with all that set up remember i set my parking brakes to my space bar i'm going to press that on my keyboard parking brakes are released i'm going to throttle up using my game controller my gamepad holding down a to throttle up to max just going to alter my view slightly once we get to takeoff speed, I'm just going to pull back gently on my left analog stick. That will do. And to relieve pressure on holding that left analog stick, I'm using my right bumper and right analog stick just to trim the aircraft so it's climbing slightly. Like so. I'm going to press the Z button on my keyboard z key on my keyboard that's put the autopilot on it will actually just climb to our height now we don't need to do anything else there but i'm going to go down using my left bumper and down on the d-pad so that bottom left g1000 use the mouse to click on the nav button here that's the nav button selected. Go back to my cockpit view, default cockpit view. The autopilot, just like that, is all set up. It's climbing to our altitude of 1200 feet. And it's following our course because I selected the nav button. You can select it here. In, in, I'm not going to do it again, but if you didn't want to go down to that screen, just mouse over it and select it there as well. I'm going to bring up, go to this menu with my mouse and select the VFR map. Let's bring up the VFR map here. And this is fully, in, fully interactive with the mouse as well. 
left click and hold down your left button. You can move your mouse to move around the screen. Scroll in or out like that. I'm going to put that on GPS tracking so it centers over our aircraft. It doesn't look like it's following the course. It's a bit of an oddity with the Xbox version or the Xbox Series S at least. I don't know if this happens on the X as well. People can inform me of that. It doesn't seem to follow the course line exactly. The PC version will follow the nav course line. I think it's more a fault with the course line rather than where what the aircraft's doing. The aircraft is going to our waypoint we set, which is the Eiffel Tower. So it is following the course. It just doesn't look like it because it's off the course line. But just have faith, it is following the course. I'm going to throttle back slightly. You can see we're over stressing the engine there. Pressing my B button a few times just so that flashing stops. And just setting it to a nice cruise speed. Which is okay there. We don't want it to over speed. So that's okay. It's only a very short course this. Don't forget to look around of course. Paris looks sensational on the Xbox Series S. And more likely even better on the X. Look around because it is a sensational city. Go and hand fly your aircraft around Paris. Is my recommendation. It's a beautiful city on the Xbox version. It's only a very short course. Once we get to this point, we're going to have to start prepping for landing. <laughs> so it doesn't take long, which is why I set this particular course up. And I won't do it in this video, but there's a lot you can do with the mouse and keyboard setting things like an ILS approach on the fly. So you can set up an ILS approach to your airport and the airport, it will basically add a star and arrival data and course to your map. And it will hand fly you onto your runway if you want to. It's a bit more complicated, but if people want to see that on the Xbox version, I'll show you that. I'll show you a video I did of that on the PC version. Go and look at that to give you an idea. But there's a lot you can do with the autopilot with the mouse and keyboard without affecting what's happening with your flight. With the game controller it tends to mess up your flight if you go down to this screen and start messing around with the cursor. But with the mouse it doesn't affect anything which is good. So we're flying over the Eiffel Tower, let's get outside. Wonderful in the on the Xbox version of Flight Simulator is Paris. Absolutely lovely. Lovely, lovely. I should have perhaps increased that time of day, but never mind, it gives us some atmosphere. We're just going to clear, I hope, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> 1,200 feet should just be enough. Yes, but it's okay. Pew! That was lucky. Not really, I've done this course a couple of times in preparation. This map will change in a moment. This line will change and it, you'll see that will fly directly along the line pretty much soon. So it is following the course we set. And if you set up this, if you're following this, there you go. You will see that it should follow the course pretty well. Once we get to here, I'll start decreasing throttle. Get that pointer there on let's go down to this actually actually I can show you better get this pointer here this line here this arrow to around there which is good for flaps uh, flap speed or for setting your flaps like I say don't forget to look around probably my favorite European city is Paris Lovely to walk around. I love all these sort of uh, boutique bespoke shops. And the food is sensational. Obviously French food is one of the best cuisines in the world. But wonderful. Even the street vendor food is fantastic in Paris. 
Okay, I'm actually going to start decreasing my throttle now. I just want to prep correctly. I don't want to be overflying the airport and I want to get to flap speed in good time. And as you can see, we're coming down already in our speed. I'll keep it there for now. I won't deploy flaps yet. The autopilot may act a bit odd once we get to this part. It may happen here. I hope it does. It will still follow the course, but it will. we'll see what happens before I say anything. But don't worry, it does bring us back on course. Let's just see what my speed is doing. I don't want to descend too much, uh, slow down too much. So I'm just going to increase speed a little bit. That will do roughly. That's fine. That's fine. So we're at a nice speed. We're not far from our airport, our Ole, at Ole. We'll be coming up to it and we should see our airport, our runway at least, before long. Yeah, like I said, I can't express enough. I'm not going to fly the Xbox version of Flight Simulator without a mouse at least now. A mouse just makes things so much easier and so easy to navigate the menus rather than using the cursor. And like I said, a wired mouse, or even better, a wireless mouse and keyboard set, are pretty cheap. Probably buy a wireless mouse and keyboard for around 10 to £15. Pound, and that's probably your best option. Perhaps people can advise on ones that are working with the Xbox version. I don't want to advise because I don't have one myself. I'm just using a simple wired mouse and keyboard just makes the whole experience that much bit better. There you go, the autopilot is starting to act strangely. Now what it will do, it, it will do us a 360 turn for some reason here on this particular course that I've set up. It will fly us back in this direction a li for a, a little while, short while, and then fly us back on our course not quite sure why it's a bit of an oddity i'm not going to call it a bug because it could be something that i've done here it's a bit of an oddity with the xbox version but it will fly us back on our course so if you set this course if you're following this don't worry if it does this at this point it will fly us back on our course I can see our departure airport there, in fact. Le Bourget. I ho hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it doesn't really matter for this video. So I've still got autopilot on. Well, I'm going to take advantage of autopilot. I'm going to go flaps one. And now it's going to turn us back again onto our course, I hope. Usually turns me the other way, but never mind. As long as it brings us back on course, I'm happy. Fingers crossed. There's our arrival airport. That's our runway. This one here flashing. So it has more or less brought us back on course there. Which is good. Now I can see the runway. I'm going to click off the autopilot before it does something daft again. I'm going to click my Y on my gamepad. Autopilot is disconnected. You can see that from the flashing autopilot symbol there on the G1000. Move the mouse out of the way. I'm going to put the mouse down on the floor because it's going to move around the screen otherwise. I've got it resting on my knee, or I had. Using my gamepad now to fly us and line us up with that runway you can see flashing there gonna go to flaps too just be aware of the flare there just trim down a little bit and then back up if needed I'm gonna try and control our descent onto this runway using the throttle and I'll try and keep aware of those papi lights I'm a bit low at the moment so I'll raise my altitude slightly
So I'm just clicking my A button to increase my altitude slightly. Clicking it or dabbing it, whichever works for you. I use a mixture of both. If you've got all reds showing on a papi lights here, let's see if I can get my mouse up here, it means you're too low. So you're going to have to ideally increase your altitude using your throttle. Just be careful how much throttle you feed in. Last stage of flaps, you can see I've got some white coming on the pape now, so I'm, I'm back to on a good approach. And that, you know, I don't want to make this a tutorial on pappy lights, but that approach is pretty much okay. I'm too high, so I'll have to decrease my altitude now. And it's a good guide, the pappy lights. You want two whites and two reds. And that's a perfect approach. Too high, so decrease my altitude. Uh, throttle, rather. And that will decrease my altitude. It's a bit fiddly with the gamepad. But a little bit of dabbing on the throttle and a little bit of clicking gets you to where you want to be. That'll do. I don't want to decrease my throttle too much now, otherwise I'm going to go into uh, stall speed, or there'll be a danger of stall speed. Just coming back a little bit more now, in fact, on my throttle, because I can see the threshold of the runway quite clearly. Not a perfect approach, but it's not specifically, specifically a tutorial on the Pappy Lights. But it would do, actually. It's not too bad. I'm do myself an injustice there using my left analog stick to control the aircraft now and I'm decreasing my throttle entirely I'm floating above the runway to come down to a nice gentle landing how's that and I'll raise my flaps break 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 got the keyboard next to me so what I'll do is take advantage of the keyboard once I've come to a full stop and put on my parking brakes are my flaps up they are so there you go that's a demonstration of setting up a flight plan using the mouse and keyboard and setting a couple of bespoke keyboard settings and using the mouse to to navigate the aircraft with the autopilot or navigate the autopilot buttons with the mouse let me know your thoughts on this please i appreciate any feedback a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if it's been helpful to you subscribe for more many more flight simulator videos on the way and i'll hopefully see you soon